Welcome to Channel It Resolves, where we play a new deck every video. I'm Country Fried, and today we're doing upgrades to Budget Mono Red. Let's take a look. Hey guys, so today we're going to be playing Red Death. It's just a mono red budget deck list that we put on uh, the channel probably like two, three weeks ago. And we just kind of upgraded a little bit, but it's still doing really good on the ladder, even as close to budget as it is. It was doing good on the ladder when it was a complete budget deck with no mythics and no rares. Now it's just got steam. So here we go. We're going to take a quick look at this. I'm not going to dump or dive into it too much. Uh, the old package had Thrill of Possibility, but we went up one. Our removal package is Flame Blessed Bolt, Play with Fire and Lightning Strike. However, Play with Fire and Lightning Strike, we're wanting to go to the opponent's face as much as possible because that's all this deck is. It's push damage, push damage, push damage, and keep pushing damage. Probably the best one drop within the package is Kumano, Face of Kakazan. Uh, level one, it comes into play. It deals damage to all your opponents and one, one damage to each Planeswalker. Walker. And then it's level two. Whenever you cast your first creature that turn, it gets a plus one, plus one counter on it when it comes into the battlefield. And then level three, you exile it. When it comes back, it's two, two with haste. Uh, we've got four Phoenix chicks in here. So if you got to get rid of something to throw a possibility and you don't know what to get rid of, a Phoenix chick is in your hand. That's what you get rid of to throw a possibility because it can come back from the graveyard. It's got flying haste. It's a one, one. If you attack with three or more creatures and pay two red, you get to bring this out of the graveyard tapped and attacking with a plus one plus one counter on it so now it's two two we have rabbit battery that's hasty one one and then if you uh reconfigure to another creature that creature gets plus one plus one for the rabbit battery and that's kind of what we do with the rabbit battery unless we got to start going wide just to sneak in damage we want to equip it to something so if you get hit with a meat hook or a depopulate or anything like that rabbit battery falls off and it's still on the field so you're still eking out damage Reinforced Ronin is probably my favorite one one or my favorite one drop. It comes in. It's a two two. It's got haste. It jumps in, punches your opponent in the face, and then it bounces out of the club and back into your hand. Sneaky little bastard. And then we've got a four of of the Valdarian Epicures as well. This was the only creature in here that doesn't have haste. It's a one one, but when it comes into play, it deals one damage to an opponent. We usually play it on turn two of Kumanu, if at all possible. So it's usually a two two. And then the other part of this, besides doing the one damage over the head, it drops a blood token. The blood token helps us out greatly, immensely, incredibly. One of those words. It really helps out. <laughs> let's go with that you can pop the blood token sack or er, discard a card from your hand and then you can go ahead and draw another card and that helps us get through mana floods and mana droughts and just get to the good stuff because this package only runs on a 1.4 cmc even with the upgrades now for the upgrades we got three bloodthirsty adversary which is two two it comes in with haste it can attack and then of course if it comes in and you've got five mana on the board you could pay another three, you get a plus one, plus one counter, and you get to cast a, a spell from your graveyard instant or sorcery with mana three or uh, three or less. So you can do a lightning strike or play with fire from the graveyard. However, just drop this on turn two. We never get to the turn five. Uh, by then, you're either going to realize that you've, con you've got to concede the game and roll on, which is what this deck is for, or you've got enough to punch out the damage and that 2-2 two -two on the field is going to help you do it. So I've never had to use the extra 3 on the payout of this thing coming into the battlefield. However, it's there if you absolutely need it. But more often than not, you've either won the game or lost the game by then. We have two Reckless Storm Seekers. It comes in. It could give a plus one, plus zero uh, to a creature, and that creature gains haste until the end of the turn if it's on its day bound side. So usually we're giving it to the Reckless Storm Seeker, and it's a 3 3 pushing through with hasty damage. However, if you've got a blocker that's on the field and you've got a flyer in the air and they don't have any flyers, feel free to put that plus one, plus one on the Phoenix Chick and let it go. On its other side, it's a 3 4, and then you can give a plus two, plus zero to a target creature. It gains trample. And haste until the end of the turn and uh you can just push through that damage and again i would probably be giving the plus counters to the chick i would probably use the first one on the storm seeker just to get that sneaky damage in off the first time you draw it and then after that if we got a chick in the air and they don't have any flyers i'd just be giving the plus one plus one counters to the chicks uh, the mountains were at 17. We took down by four, and another upgrade was Crucial Defiant, uh, Crucible of Defiance because it doesn't penalize us. They don't come in play tapped. 
And then, of course, if we do pop it off at the four cost or the three cost, then you get two one one uh, hasty spirit creature tokens. So more damage. And then, of course, the sideboard's chock full of stuff. We'll cover that in the outro. But, guys, I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. Really budget deck. Really fun. Games are fast. You can pop in. You get the win or you know you're going to lose. You can just go ahead and concede and keep rolling. So if the ladder grinds your thing and you want something that's budget, this is it. This is it. Well, this one's got upgrades nine total if you count the rares and mythics but if you want the original budget list it is in the video uh the past what two three weeks just look for mono budget or budget mono red but this is a great list really fast have a lot of fun with it it's just hysterical it shouldn't work but it does with that guys i hope you guys enjoy the gameplay i'll see you at the outro where we'll cover the sideboard with other possible upgrades and other ideas until then stay safe be happy and healthy peace we'll see you guys all right, we go first. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty fast. And we get the scry. Yeah, we'll keep. Just to get cycling through a little bit faster. Okay. Hopefully we hit another land. This is actually one time where we kind of need another land. <laughs> Ah. Hmm. I'm guessing they're wanting to hit the Ronin. So, we'll go. I think they've got cut down. So, they're probably going to go on the Ronin. Either that or Infernal Grasp, but damn, take damage if you want. They're thinking. Oh, shit. Maybe not. We'll pass. Had I known that the uh, the deck was going to filter out like this, I probably would not have tossed that land. <laughs> but uh, you just never know. Sometimes you hit droughts, sometimes you hit floods. We should be able to close it out here. I hope. We'll see. Yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, that'll be it. As long as they don't stop the ball bearings or anything. Even if they stop one, that's fine. We got it with the others. Beautiful. All right, GG's. That'd be it.
Good game. This month's Patreon rewards features some of the most impactful lotuses in Magic's history. Check out all the details and sign up at patreon.com slash it resolves. Uh, we go first. Yeah, we'll keep this. I mean, the value of everything will only be a one or two drops. It's crazy. Depending on what they put on the ground here, we may have to do Thrill the Possibility on the chick. Leaving Ronin, maybe. Hmm. Now nah, let's just go full damage this one. We'll leave it where we've got chick and Thrill the Possibility on the next go around. We're gonna have to block up. Four damage to attacking creature. They're gonna Valor a stance, okay. Yeah, I guess I don't have enough for Seed of a Ganjo. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Man, I, yeah, we are. We're gonna do this. Especially with that. Hopefully we pull a burn spell right off the top. That'd be great. We did not. So let's go ahead and go here. Here. Okay. Do this. Um, yeah, I'm willing to trade. Now the chick gets to come back in. Oh, wait. Did the chick not? Why? Oh, because I didn't have enough to pay for it. My bad. That is right. Okay. Well, it's just not going to be good for you. Two on the ground blocks either way, two in the air. Go like this. I kind of want to get the other chicken, so let's go. You can block it all. Got to block it all. Got to keep blocking. <laughs> what the crap? Math is harder for some people than even my country has. All right, GG's. Uh, Pono goes first, man. That's a real downside for us. So we'll still we'll see what they got. If they're gonna play. Holy God, man. Do you really need to think that hard on your first land? It's a good one.
I like it so much, I'm gonna do it myself. Sure. Let's see what your two drop is. It's probably lightning strike, to be honest. Uh, they probably have lightning strike. Good upgrade. It really is. Good upgrades. Good upgrades. We'll cover this in the outro. <laughs> we'll cover this in the outro. <laughs> These are all good, man. These are all good. Uh, let's see. We have five on the board, three in hand, eight total. We can go here. And here now. Hmm. We can go here. Hmm. No, because if they got the removal. Okay. game all right guys there's the upgrades we'll talk about this in the outro <laughs> ggs man ggs all right we go first yeah we'll keep we will keep and we will play Turn one commando is beautiful. Okay, is it? Okay. I'm gonna go here first. Here. Really just depends if they can get something on the board. What we do next. So we've got five going in off of this. We can flame bless bolt, remove anything. Man, that's a rough one. Um, yeah. Fading hope. Play with fire. Lightning strike. Use them all. Oops. Bro. I'm gonna oops you into oblivion here in a second. I'm trying to get another basic land instead of using Crucible. Let's go here. Go ahead and remove flame bless bolt. That works. That works too. Let's 
see what they got this turn. Okay. That works for me. Shit. Keep going, big dog. Hopefully we get something decent on the next turn, man. To eventually toss away to a uh, throw a possibility. Sure. <laughs> um, I will hold back. I mean, I know it won't block. up if you can I guess I don't know man I think that's it I think if we drop this bird and go in with everything <laughs> all right guys so there was gameplay hopefully you guys enjoyed it so yeah as you can see if you can push out the damage and close out a match quick you get the win if you don't then there's nothing wrong with just good gaming and conceding and moving on that's the latter game you're trying to get in as many games as quickly as possible that's why i don't play esper control on the ladder all the time because those games are 30 damn minutes long this will get you in and out and you're going to know whether you're going to win or lose uh especially by turn five or six so here's some ideas though for the sideboard that i had for the deck one actually came from jay's video last night on stream and then the rest are all just kind of things i've been tossing around in my mind as possibilities however not all of these are upgrades in the sense of rare and mythic some of them are still within the budget of common and uncommon and you can do with them what you will i think i like the package where it is right now i'm not really stole, sold on storm seeker because it kind of feels late game and we don't want that in our hand early so i may go back to just a four of on bloodthirsty adversary and a four of on thorough possibility however i don't know that's a decision i'll make here later but for the sideboard and other things that you could possibly use you have hammer hand in here it's one cost enchantment whenever it enters the battlefield target creature can't block this turn an enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has haste so I do like this, but I don't like the idea of enchants, guys. There's just too much early game removal right now and fading hopes and stuff like this. So this feels like it could possibly just be a completely dead card in some matchups. And we've got nothing but value out of what we've got going right now. The next one is raise the effigy, which you can destroy a target creature or target a crack attacking creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn as a one drop. So I think I like this over hammer hand. We've got Voltage Surge, which you could possibly use in here. We do have Artifacts and Blood Tokens and stuff like that that we could utilize with Voltage Surge, but I still prefer Flame Blessed Bolt with the uh, Tenacious Underdogs. Cathartic Pyre is another possibility, but you don't have the option of sending that three damage to your opponent. 
but you do have the option of discarding up to two cards and then drawing that many cards. However, uh, it is something that you could add in here. I just, for me, the split difference on it, I would rather go with Thrill of Possibility. And if that three damage could be applied to any target, then it would definitely be included in here. We have Rada's Firebrand, a two drop, three one, and then whenever it attacks, target creature defending player controls with power less than Rada Firebrand's power can't block this turn. So this is a real possibility, guys. Uh, it may not be bad. Um, however, I mean, it's a two drop and it's a three one, but it doesn't have haste. And that's where we've got the problem. But if we had Rabbit Battery and we could set up to put Rada's Firebrand and reconfigure rabbit battery to it to give it haste, then that's a possibility. Or we could switch up Bloodthirsty Adversary and put Rod of Firebrand in there and leave Stormseeker in and hopefully give it haste that way as well. Or by the time you drop Rod of Firebrand in, and if you vote, if you don't have a Stormseeker on the field already, then it just kind of sets there for a turn, and that one toughness kind of leaves it weak to everything. Plus it falls to uh, cut down real easy. Uh, we do have Twin Inferno which I did try this in a game. It's not in the video, but it did work really well. When you cast your uh, next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the copy. Or target creature you control gains double strike until the end of turn. So I think if I was going combat trick, I honestly think Twin Inferno would probably be the combat trick I went with. So you may take out two Storm Seekers. I mean, I may try this and then put in the two Twin Infernos because... A double shot of lightning strike is six damage. <laughs> a double shot of play with fire is four damage. Or giving a creature you control double strike till the end of turn, four damage, four damage. I mean, it can get out of hand really fast. So I do like this in this package. It's kind of a sneak attack like that, but um, it's not bad, guys. It's really not bad. I don't know. I think I'm going to try this personally myself for a little while, but again, it's a budget card, so it still fits the budget theme. We also have big score in here, but by turn four, it's kind of late. And then we've got uh, Yotai Declares War. I saw Jay playing this the other night uh, on his stream, and I really like the idea of this one, especially since you get to create the O2 colorless Thopter and with flying. And then on level two, tap any number of untapped targets you control. When you do, it de deals that uh, Yotai. Yotai declares war, deals that much damage to a target creature or planeswalker. And then level three, up to one target artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness four, four until the end of turn, which you can usually just give to your uh, Thopter and make it a four, four flyer. So I do like this idea and it being a two drop still fits right in with the theme of everything we're doing. Uh, another possibility is Chandra dressed to kill. You can do the plus one, add a red mana, and then it deals one damage to one target player or planeswalker. You can do a plus one where you exile the top card of your library. If it's red, you may cast this turn. And then the minus seven, exile top five cards of your library. You may cast red spells from among them this turn, and you get an emblem with whenever you cast a red spell, this emblem deals X damage to any target where X is the amount of mana spent this turn. I like Chandra in this package. If we were going back to a three of, I would probably use Chandra over Stormseeker. Uh, it's just something different on the field that the opponent has to focus on and take care of, or it can get out of hand. And uh, Stormseeker can get blocked up, where Chandra can go over the top. We've got Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Again, I don't think this is the three drop I would use, but it does create the 2-2 Goblin Shaman creature. It does create treasure tokens. You can discard draw cards off of its level two, and then, of course, it can come back as Reflection of Kiki Jiki as a 2-2. It's really good. There's nothing wrong with it. I just don't think it's fast enough for this deck, if that makes sense, because you drop it in on turn three, and then you got to have turn four and five to get the payout of it, and then you got to go turn six and seven to get more payout from Kiki Jiki. And that's where I think it's a little too slow. As crazy as that sounds, in this deck, it's too slow. My opinion. Professional Facebreaker, I was thinking about this one. It's a 2-3, it's got Menace, and then whenever one or more creature you control deals damage to a player, create a treasure token. Sacrifice treasure, exile the top card of your library, you may play that card this turn. I like this card possibility in this deck as a 3-drop. I think it's definitely a possibility. However, I like the next one better. Witty Roastmaster. For a 3-drop, if I was going to go 3-drop, I would still probably go Stormbreaker, 
or Chandra, and probably Chandra. Woody Rose Master is another possibility that's a budget card. It's 3 2, it's Alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals one damage to an opponent. It can go over the top, it doesn't even have to tap. Plus, it's a 3 2 body on a 3 drop, which is not absolutely horrible. So, I don't know if I would go Stormbreaker over Woody Rose Master. Those two are kind of tied. However, I think Chandra is more value at 3 drop if I was going to add a 3 drop in here. And then, of course, the four drop, which I'm absolutely kind of opposed to personally. However, you guys can run with it. If you get the four drop, it's got haste. It's three, three. And then whenever it attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature you control. And then thundering rise, you deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of modified creatures you control other than thundering rise. You look, it works in this deck really well, really, really, really well. However, I don't want this in my opening hand ever. I just don't. I got other things to do. We need to be pushing out damage as quickly as possible. And I think adding this takes away from the rest of the damage that we could possibly be dealing. So there are some options for you guys, both budget and non-budget. There's a lot of things that you can still do with this deck. I don't even know if this is the greatest list of mono red. Uh, I don't even know if this is the fastest list of mono red. Thundering Rise You and Stormseeker may be the ones you want to put in here so you get some long game going. Um, but I want a deck list where I can just get in and out with four or five games and I know whether I'm going to win or I can concede in good game and just move on. And I think this is the deck list I'm going to move forward with to keep trying to push Mythic while I'm off screen, not recording videos for the day so there you guys go all right with that i hope you guys enjoyed the deck list i hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay i hope you guys enjoyed the video if so please leave that thumbs up we truly appreciate it and until next time guys stay safe be happy and healthy peace we'll see you guys later have a great one